Hey everyone, thank you so, so, so much for clicking on this Netflix review. The fact that you are willing to sacrifice a few minutes out of your day to consume my content really does mean the world to me. For those of you that are unaware, I review everything that gets released on Netflix. So if you're curious about whether a new movie, new series, or new show is any good, come to my channel and I will let you know if it's worth your time. So subscribe if you haven't. So let's talk about Rurouni Kenshin, The Beginning, which is the fifth and final, but also a prequel film in this film series, Huroni Kenshin, which is based off of a manga of the exact same name. Phew, that was a mouthful. So I'm gonna let you know off the bat, this is probably my favorite prequel of all time. I don't think I've ever enjoyed a prequel movie, series, or show as much as I enjoyed this one. And in fact, I enjoyed this prequel so much that I probably enjoyed it more than the main line Ruroni Kenshin films, which I really, really wasn't expecting. But ultimately, for those of you that really want to know the background of the story, a brief background of what this film is about is ultimately it's about how the main character gets the signature cross across his cheek. And that might not sound like a lot, but that is such a defining part of the character in the first four films. So to have that explored in this film really was exciting and engaging. Another little interesting tidbit is that this was actually filmed at the exact same time as Ruoni Kenshin, the final. So it's just great to see how similar these two films are, but also just how different they are. So I'm just gonna dive right into what I really loved about this film, and then also tackle some of the things I didn't necessarily enjoy as much, and then finally give you my recommendations. So of course, Ruoni Kenshin, everyone knows you go to watch these movies because you wanna see action. Seriously, the action in this film was again top-notch, absolutely stellar, but what I will say is the choreography was probably better in this film than any other film in the series and definitely better than the final. This film was definitely just focused on sword play. There were no large miniguns, no rifles, nothing like that. It was all just sword play, clever choreography, fantastic fight sequences, and hyper-realistic action sequences, meaning that there was a hint of realism there, but it also really kind of went over the top at times, which was great. This was a great way to show manga or anime can be done really well in live action if handled by the correct people with the correct talents. The action sequences were absolutely mind blowing. If you think about modern films today, you get John Wick, Nobody, those are films where the action sequences and the choreography are absolutely mind-boggling. It's very similar to The Transporter, in fact, as well. If you just took those films and put them into a feudal Japan setting with samurai, that's what you have with this film. Absolutely phenomenal, exciting, and engaging action sequences. And I have to say, the stunt work was incredible. You can see for a fact that these are real human bodies being thrown through these prop walls, being thrown through these trees, being hoisted against walls and stuff. It's real, it's visceral, and it's powerful, and it is so engaging and so exciting to watch. When you have great stunt work with fantastic choreography, it makes for a phenomenal action sequence. And what's great about this is we also get so many in-depth character scenes. We get a lot of character development in this film, a lot more character development in this film than we did in the fourth film, The Final. And so it was great to actually get these moments of development. And so when you're able to take your choreography, you're able to take your stunt work, and you're able to take characters that you can engage with, Yo, you are just in for a roller coaster of emotion that's really, really exciting. Now, I did mention character development. We have a lot of that in this film, but I will say that's where the negatives come in a little bit for me. This movie, I believe, really struggles with pacing, especially in the second and third act. We get scenes that are just so incredibly slow and drawn out, and I guess it's a great way to illustrate the contrast of the more action-orientated life that these samurai were experiencing in war times and now we're kind of trying to isolate ourselves from that. We're trying to keep in hiding from that. And so it makes sense that everything is a lot more calm and a lot slower. But it is really drawn out and it is very, very slow. This film is over two hours in length and I really feel like they could have cut out maybe 10 to 20 minutes of that to give us a smaller film, but a tighter film and a film that holds your engagement for a lot longer. The character development scenes, while powerful, are incredibly, incredibly long, and I feel could be trimmed down just a little bit. And then probably my biggest negative, which I felt like the final also really suffered with, was flashbacks. While we definitely didn't have as many flashbacks as we did in the final, we still had enough flashbacks in this movie that I was like, okay, why are we watching this scene again? 
because the final really suffered from overshowing everything. Like every time the characters are feeling something, we get a flashback to why they're feeling that way. And while it wasn't as bad in the beginning, it really, there were still scenes I just felt like we didn't need to see. We understand why the characters are feeling a specific way. We don't need to be spoon fed that reasoning. And I know a lot of people mentioned in the comment section of my previous video that they liked it because you really got into the, the, the headspace of the characters and you can understand that they were actually haunted by those memories. And I can see where that is valid and I, I understand that. But at the same time, as a viewer, there's this idea that you understand what the characters are going through. Uh, there's this rule, show, don't tell. And cool, awesome, you're showing us fantastic. You're not having the characters say, I'm so sad. Rather, we're being shown why the character is sad, but at the same time, a simple facial expression from the character should be able to remind us, oh snap, of course the character is sad now because of what happened back then. We don't need to be shown all of these flashbacks continuously to understand the character's mental headspace. But ultimately, besides some pacing issues and some flashback issues, those are the only gripes I have with this film. Ultimately, at the end of the day, Brilliant action, characters that are memorable and enjoyable, phenomenal action sequences. And just to throw it in there at the end, I really feel like the dubbing for this movie wasn't too bad either. If I'm not mistaken, it's the same actors from the films before because I recognized the voices straight away. I watched them both subbed and dubbed. And honestly, the dubbing was good enough that I never got drawn out of my emergence in this movie. So you guys can watch this with both subtitles or without, and I think you're going to enjoy the film no matter what. I'm going to recommend this to any anime fans, manga fans, any action fans. This is definitely a movie that you can really, really enjoy. And surprisingly, has a lot of heart and emotional scenes that really pull at your heart strings. And can kind of get you just a little bit emotional. But guys, thank you so much for watching. You're the best. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I can't wait to see you again in another review.